So I wanted to take you through ClipDraw a little bit to see how easy it is and how functional it is to be able to use to provide edits for your players and uh, for your coaching staff. So to start, you go to New Project, you click on New Project, and then you go find the file that you want. Just have one here. Uh, I click it, and then I enter it into ClipDraw, and now it's in ClipDraw. And now from there, the functionality uh, becomes pretty straightforward. The one recommendation up front is ClipDraw uh, right now does not handle really large files. Uh, there, there is a tendency that sometimes it freezes. So uh, I use small files, and then if I want to merge them, I later merge them in Camtasia. But uh, you could merge them in uh, Movie Maker or, or uh, whatever whatever video program you have on your computer to be able to merge them. Now that we're in ClipDraw, we play the clip, and essentially the two buttons that you need to know are uh, I and O. Right now, uh, we're, where we want to start the clip, we want to remove that part at the beginning. So now we can either just play or we can use this to move the timeline back and say we want to start the clip from here then I press I and you'll see below now this red part is the part where the clip actually starts and I can manipulate that a little bit I can move this forward or back as well in here I can move within the timeline if I click within the time frame here and then that's where I'm starting the clip and if I press O, which I which I won't right now but that's where it ends the clip and you can again you can manipulate the beginning and ending after the fact during whenever you want um, sometimes again I can just go edit without even saying that I'm gonna start the clip there uh, you can do that at the end or you can press this button here this is make a register for the whole video which means that if I click that then the whole video when I go to uh, produce the video the whole video will be recorded uh, right now, again, let's go back and I'll just start the clip right here. So I press I and then you see that's when I produce it for you on Basketball Immersion to share it with you. That's where you'll see the clip and we've removed all that beginning of the clip and it's that easy. I play it. Now I want to introduce something. I go to this button here, which you see highlighted is draw. I click on draw and what will come up is this screen right here. So this screen is my a telestration screen where I add the different types of things I want. Um, I can add a, a 3D line there. I can add a straight line there. I can do curve line here, which is I click, 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 click. Anytime I click, it changes. And then at the end of it, I double click, and then that's the line right there. With all of these lines, I can, if I make a mistake, I can undo last, undo last, or I can highlight it and then I can cut it and that removes it as well. So there's different ways, but pretty intuitive relative to, you know, again, using any type of word processing, you can copy and paste and you can cut or you can undo, which most people are familiar with. So actually on this clip here, I want to demonstrate that this was a pass to the trail. I can change the width as well. So if I want to make this line really thick, then there you go, or thin here as well. So you can change the width of the line or the, the words uh, that you type in as well, which we'll show you in a little bit. Here, I'm changing the line. I tend to just have offenses red and defenses green. So right now, and again, no rhyme or reason, you can use whichever you want, but you can change the color of that. You can also go to this part here, which is the type of line. And now this is a straight line. You can use different types of dashed lines or dotted lines. For pass, I use the third one, which just demonstrates a pass there. And again, once it's in here, I can manipulate the line any way I want with just a simple drag function. And uh, you know, I can turn it, change the angle, and we're in it from there. The thing that we want to highlight, this is a relatively simple play and a simple clip. It's just a play out of uh, what we call Buffalo action. 
which would be a pass here, and then we run a dribble handoff to this side. But what we want to demonstrate is that we're doing something special here. So I want to highlight the defender that we're screening. So what I do is I use this as a spotlight. So right here, I can click. I clicked here. I click over where the defender is. Anytime, so I made a mistake there. I put two spotlights, so I just go and undo it right there. And I can also just go here and I can click it, even though that, that, that'll disappear in the edit right here. If I want to do something with this line, uh, I can just click on it. So left click. And now I can manipulate and make it bigger, smaller, or I can clearly move the line up or down. Again, intuitive relative to how you would handle most things. Now this is a defender, so I want this to be green so that Right now, the spotlight's on this player. This is the player that we're going to headhunt on the screen. As soon as the ball gets here, what you're going to see is now I want to use a screen. So this function right here, here's a screen. So this player is going to come down the screen. Well, as you see, it defaults back to the last color you use or the last line in this example. So this one's dotted. So I just have to make sure that these two uh, white circles are there that means i'm using that line right now if for some reason i want to go back you can see now that i'm using this one so that's the color i would manipula manipulate so right here i'm using this so i go i change it to red and now i want to make it a straight line so i go back up here and make it there and now we've created that on the catch there's a down screen head hunting the defender covering the low player uh, which is this player right here. And when I want, I can add any type of, this is, when I use this, I add a word box. And I can, again, change the colors. I can also change the transparency of the box uh, so that you can see it better depending on the background. I want it to be a, a non-transparent generally so it covers up the background. But then, again, to get here, all I do is click on this. I can type in here. Uh, in terms of, generally I do it in capitals. The play starts with a trail pass and a weak side down screen. There, so we type that in there. I just click on this and now you'll see it right here. I can again manipulate this in terms of the size with, uh, with just changing again the different size or smaller depending on where I want it to be I could also after the fact change the colors I can change the font this one here I tend to keep it just whatever the default font is otherwise I'm, I'm moving around too much but you can change the fonts here it's a whole function again what you would see in terms of a, a word processing program you see a bunch of the options here um, pretty pretty straightforward with that um, so here we are and I've got this, I've got that. I can also add this, a text box here where I would say something about this player since he's again on offense, I want to make sure it's highlighted and then I can just type in, uh, set up there to find and now it's right there. Now I can manipulate the box again. So I want to put it there actually for this example, because I don't want it to block the screen. You can turn the arrow and I'll show that to you again real quick, because that was something that I had to figure out initially. But right now I can sh move this box so it's lower. So again, let me show if I add something here. This is a text box. Ooh. Right there, let me use this one. That if I want to change, I can just manipulate these to make it bigger or smaller. I can make this line longer to stretch that so that you can put the box in different locations. Or in terms of that, if I want to just change it so it's facing the other direction, I would grab this middle arrow right here, move it up, and then I move that up. And now I'm in that situation right now where we have the, the box, the text box facing a different direction. Now I don't want that there, so I'll get that out of there. I use, generally I would say I use mainly those things, the different types of arrows, whether they're straight lines. So again, if I want to put a, a, a screen that changes angles, so a player goes one direction, 
then I do it like that. I'll put the, the free curve line there. And then I just add at the end of it, I add the other screen and then I'm particular. So I'll make sure I match that up. So it looks like one continuous line. So it's very easy to do different things like that. You can add boxes. So I can put a box around a player as well. Uh, just by using these uh, different things over here uh, with that uh, we can throw an arrow in there too a thicker arrow smaller arrow just again tons of options depending on what you want to highlight and how you want to show things I just removed all those things I, I would say generally those things I might sometimes use what's a, a closed 3d circle which is just putting this right there so you can focus in again on a player uh, depending on who it was uh, that, that you can see uh, this spotlight tends to be a little bit more focusing the attention of the learner on the actual spot and then there's a bunch of other functions which i'm not going to get into here but they're fun to play with so when you're done adding whatever you need to add to the edit then you just click on either the x and that goes to a save function or when you maximize your screen, you see the save function right here. So I honestly just tend to use the X because it's up there. And then do you want to save the changes? Yes or no. And then I click on yes. And then what happens is it saves the changes within what you're doing. This particular play, it'll save it. And I'll show you in a second how it shows up. Where that shows up right now is right here. And I can click on it to see what I did. Clearly there's some things on there I don't want. So anytime I want within how I'm editing a play, I can go back. I just click on that area. Let me show you again. Click on this area right here. And that brings you back to that animated screen. Also, if I want to start over with a clip, I can just go delete all. And then that'll remove all the stuff from the screen in real time just show you how fast you can do certain things once there's obviously a learning portion to this but once you get good with the clip draw it's it's relatively fast process and we can add all of this again I have a set way of my colors and you know different types of things that I do So there I did exactly what we just showed and probably did that in under a minute, although I didn't time myself, but that's simple. Then I save it and I can do as many of these different types of screens as I want within a play, but I'll play on here when we see the play. So right now we're in the, we've shown that initial part and now we're in the decision. So if I want, I can highlight another part of this and just say you know defender right here that we're focused on and i can highlight the different options where we're in that shot drive decision right now that that screen opened up the possibility if i want to add a dribble then i just grab this which is a dribble function again offense for me is red and then i've added a dribble where now we're highlighting the fact that on the catch shoot or drive decision because an advantage was created.
right there. And now we've got that. Save it. Okay, let me show you this too. So if I want to make the clips longer within that, I generally stay around five seconds. Uh, but some of the clips that are a little more complicated or I have more stuff on it, then I can change it to seven or eight seconds I found. But again, depends on the learner and depends on who you're targeting in terms of that. But I can just simply change this. And if I change one, it changes all of them or I change them manually in that example. But what it does for every clip is it all changes them all now to seven seconds. I tend to go with five, see it changes them all, all at the same time. And then save it, and now I'm right there. And now I'm back to that. So we've added a second video animation to the clip. Now you can see this, you see the whole play. Player shoots it, makes a shot. I want the play to end there because I don't want to show you stuff that you don't need to see to focus you in on what you want. So I just press uh, O and now that ends the clip. Now to produce the clip, it's as simple as either clicking produce registers, which is make a movie. For me, again, the handy thing is the key keyboard uh, shortcuts, which is S and S brings it up right now. And now it saves it. Uh, which I like, it saves it with a one dash in front. So I know that that clip is an animation. So whether you remove parts of it or you rename it, you can do all those things. I just like to keep it the exact same name. So we see it from there and then it goes in the exact same spot. You can clearly move it wherever you want within it too. And now we save it. And now it's going to save relatively fast. And then it says, do you want to open the folder? Well, just for the sake of this, uh, we'll go uh, to, to the folder right there. And now I click on it. And now you can see, here's the animation we just did. And he makes the shot. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more how easy and simple clip draw is.